What's up guys, everything Apple Pro here, and welcome to my part 10 of my iPhone 7 rumors and leaks video series. I never expected to make this many videos when I started, I just wanted to give you guys a good idea of the new iPhone and what it would be and all that. And uh, you know, it's just a testament to how big this thing is gonna be. I've made 10 videos full, you know, chock full of rumors, leaks, details, patents, and they still keep coming. You know, this thing is gonna be big. There's a lot of expectations, they're set here, and Apple has to meet them so this is part 10 and there is a lot of fresh stuff in here I'm not rehashing the same rumors and all that this is all new and recent so let's get into it guys this is iPhone 7 7 Pro iPhone SE rumors leaks patents everything you need to know in the latest news so let's start with the one happening the soonest the iPhone SE Apple's officially pushed out invites to their March 21st event happening at Cupertino Infinite Loop, and it's titled Let Us Loop You In. So, you know, it's debatable what that could mean, but it's official. This thing is getting announced very, very soon. Of course, like any iPhone, the closer we get to its release date, the more we know about it, and we know almost everything there is to know about the iPhone SE already, and now it's got an official release date. And in more recent news, the iPhone SE has all but been confirmed to start at $450 here in the USA. Now, it's not guaranteed, but this price point makes more sense to me than $550 or even $600. That's really treading into iPhone 6S territory. It's gonna be a downgraded iPhone 6S in terms of features, we'll have 3D touch, we'll have have many of the lucrative features the iPhone 6s or 6s plus have so it makes sense to charge less for it and this is also of course in an attempt to sell these things in emerging markets India is one of the biggest target places for the iPhone SE It's predicted to bring in 5.5 billion dollars in revenue and uh, investors take note so I'm not invested in Apple or anything like that but it's supposed to be a huge cash cow Apple's not competing in the lower markets now it will be of course, I talked about it in my last video, but the iPhone 5S won't be going away. It's said to receive a price cut. So it could start at $250 now, possibly $350 if Apple wants to make more money, but it's not expected to disappear just yet. And in a more recent leak, a case leak for the iPhone SE has emerged from Spigen. Spigen is a case manufacturer, very big, and this leak actually details the iPhone SE very slightly. What we can see from it is basically it looks just like an iPhone 5S, and this is basically what the rumors have been suggesting. It'll have a slightly more curved design, but overall, it'll look just like the 5S. It's basically just an updated internals for it, and this leak suggests that is the case. And I just wanted to throw these in. These are concept images for the iPhone SE, probably one of the best I've seen so far. I'll link them down below in the description and I just want to say it's not going to happen the glass on the back isn't likely but it would be nice to just have a rounded iPhone 5s design I've always liked it it's a very timeless design and these concept images you know they just bring out that spark in me I love it anyways be sure to check that out so let's get to the good stuff the iPhone 7 the SE we know everything about it's coming out very soon less than 10 days now so the iPhone 7 is the one that's capturing my attention now and very very recently literally hours before making this video the actual lens module has leaked for the larger iPhone 7 Pro and I'll get to the lineup in a little bit it's a little bit confusing there's all these models being thrown around I want to clear that up with you in just a little bit but this latest lens leak basically details the new lens and basically it looks very Apple-like. You know, the numbers right above the connector, I see that on every iPhone when I take it apart. So to me, it looks very genuine. It looks very Apple-like. And we've talked extensively about the features that this new lens would provide. There's a ton of benefits. Not only would it be a slimmer housing to fit the new thinner shell of the iPhone 7 Pro, it has a ton of software things you can do with it. And be sure to check out the earlier videos because I talk a lot about that. And that ties in with my next rumor. The case for the iPhone 7 has been leaked by a case manufacturer. Now. Every year, Apple sends out schematics to designers. Of course, they're going to leak these and they want to sell them maybe even earlier. I don't even know what it's about, but they happen to leak them all the time. And in this case, it suggests that the headphone jack really is going. It's been confirmed and confirmed and confirmed again. And now it's been confirmed again. So we don't see a headphone jack just two cutouts for the speakers on the iPhone 7 and a larger cutout for the camera module. Now this doesn't look like an iPhone 7 Pro case, just looks like an iPhone 7. And that one isn't supposed to receive the dual lens setup, but the actual camera lens could be larger on the standard iPhone 7 even. So that's what we might be seeing here. 
Overall, the design is very similar looking based on this case to the iPhone 6S right now. Curved edges and same size about even so, you know, I don't know. I'm a little iffy about this one, but if it's anything to go by, it confirms there'll be no headphone jack and a larger camera module. And there's a new LTE chip that's all but been confirmed for the iPhone 7, the XMM. 7360 by Intel. So this new chip would allow theoretical download speeds over LTE of up to 450 megabits download speed. Now that doesn't even compare to the new Galaxy S7. 600 is what it's currently capable of. No carrier will reach that just yet, but it's good to be future-proof. Intel is said to be building 40% of these chips. The other usually goes to Qualcomm, currently who develops chips, the LTE chips for the iPhone 6S. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the iPhone 7 lineup. Uh, a lot of people seem confused about it. Now, Ming-Chi Kao is suggesting there will be two iPhone 7 Plus or Pro models. There will be a 7 Plus and a 7 Pro. He's probably more knowledgeable in this than me, but it just seems too scattered. Apple releasing an iPhone 7, 7 Plus, 7 Pro, and then to have an iPhone SE lineup, it just seems too much. In my opinion, I think it'll be iPhone 7, iPhone 7 Pro, and then the iPhone SE, the smaller variant. The 7 Pro, of course, is the one with the dual lens, 256 gigabytes max storage and a little bit more RAM. It'll be focused on more high-end iPhone users. And that lineup makes sense, but Ming-Chi Kao is suggesting there will be three iPhone 7 models. Now in this latest rumor, it's a little bit ironic. The iPhone 7, just a standard 7 model, might get the Samsung Galaxy S7 camera sensor. Now the spec bump isn't likely to go up to 16 megapixels. No one's been talking about that. It's most likely going to stay at 12. And Sony actually produces some of the chips used in the Galaxy S7. Samsung produces them in in-house and then Sony delivers the rest that they can't fill in. So it's unlikely Samsung would give their flagship camera sensor to Apple, but Sony makes a very, very similar sensor that's being used in the S7 and Sony currently produces the iPhone 6S sensor. So it's very, very likely that that same sensor could be modified even a little bit or not at all even and put into an iPhone 7. It's a very good sensor. We tested it. It does very well in low light. The benefits would be larger pixel sizes and that'd be better visibility in low light, better light capture, less noise. And there is that dual pixel technology, which offers 100% of the pixels to focus, you know, making it an ultra fast autofocus. And I've tested it. I was very impressed. The iPhone for comparison uses 5% of its pixels in the camera lens versus 100 on the S7 and in the sensor. So ironic, the S7, lens itself could make its way to the iPhone 7. So there's a new patent that's been granted to Apple, a new liquid metal home button. What could this be useful for? Well, pressure sensitive home button. And we've actually covered this in an earlier software patent in one of my videos. Now, this will actually suggest the means of being able to do so, to have a home button that you could use with varying amounts of pressure. Just like 3D touch on the display, you'd have a 3D touch like home button. Now, this patent basically details using liquid metal as the alloy because of its elasticity. It can bounce back even better than stainless steel or titanium that's currently being used in the home buttons right now. So it's just a means to do so in order to create the 3D touch pressure sensitive home button. And last one on the iPhone 7. So reports are that the iPhone 7 could feature new 3D touch second generation technology. Now what could be in this new technology? Multi-touch 3D is the only new feature. We don't know anything about speed or responsiveness. You know, maybe that could be improved, but a new report is basically detailing multi-touch 3D and Apple's received a patent for this a while ago, allowing you to use multiple fingers with that pressure sensitive display. The only use I could think of for the iPhone, we're not gonna be holding the phone with one hand and using two fingers on the display. It just doesn't work like that. The only use I can think of is using it like this and using two different areas of the display as joysticks, pressure sensitive areas that wouldn't mean just one entire display is a one pressure sensor, you'd have two separate areas on the display and you can use them as a joystick, you know, various button pressure. Uh, there's could be a lot of uses for that. That's the only one I could think of. So multi-touch 3D in second generation 3D touch. So we talked about in my last video, OLED displays making their way to iPhones in 2018, possibly sooner in 2017. Now a new report is detailing that a 5.8 inch mammoth iPhone is rumored to be coming in 2018 or 2017, tying in with these OLED rumors, making it that it will be an OLED display. So I'll get into the details as to why this makes sense, why it's not dumb at all, and why it could totally work. But just the fact that a 5.8 inch display sounds crazy to me, but when we look into the details, 
it makes a lot more sense. And supply chain sources believe 50 million units could be shipped and purchased within a year of shipping this new screen size. So that's a lot of expectation for just you know a small upgrade in the screen size. So take a look at this little schematic. This is why it's not crazy. And this ties in with my next rumor as well. But an actual 5.8 inch display on an iPhone Pro or Plus series doesn't mean it's crazy, doesn't mean it's too big. It could be just as usable. It doesn't take up necessarily more space, just more space on the edge. And that ties in with my last rumor, an edge display could be very, very likely as a new patent details in 2017 or 2018 with an OLED display. OLEDs, as you know, are curvable. They could be curved with glass being shaped around it. And this new patent by Apple details a curvable display that goes around the phone and is more functional than Samsung's variant. Samsung just uses it as an edge swipe for apps or a nightstand. This could actually replace your volume buttons or possibly even camera shutter. You could use it to take pictures, change volume. That's just two of the examples detailed in the patent. Otherwise, it could make for a much larger, much more immersive display, getting rid of bezels completely. I mean, Samsung has been waging a war on bezels and they're currently winning. So I think this is pretty cool. So guys, there you go. Those are the latest rumors on the iPhone 7, 7 Pro and SE. It's a little long, I'm sorry, but I wanted to cover everything. I don't know how many more of these I'll make. As long as this information keeps coming, I will keep making these videos. So thanks so much for watching guys. Stay tuned. Within 10 days, we'll know everything there is to know about the new iPhone SE, the new iPad, and possibly an Apple Watch or MacBook even. So have a great day. Hope you enjoyed this video. Peace.